The Belfast of today is very different from the city I left back in the year 2000. This place has made enormous strides. CBRE has been at the forefront of Belfast development. It's headed up by an old friend of mine, Brian Lavery. We're going to talk about Belfast's past, its present and its future. Brian explained how the office market has changed and how CBRE have changed along with it by investing in their own office space which he detailed as necessary to both attract and retain the talent required for new business in Belfast. Brian, my old friend, I left here 17 years ago. My visits have been sort of six monthly. Uh -huh. So I have seen our city change since the year 2000. Um, the structural changes are obvious, but there's also a change, an emotional change here, a change in attitude. It's, it's just a much more relaxed city now, John, than since the days that, you know, we would have went to certain places and not go other places. It's so much more relaxed. What are the drivers for increased confidence in Belfast? Well, it's a young population to start with. And so the university is giving out great talent at the moment, both the University of Ulster and Queen's. You've got a renewed energy in terms of the hospitality sector, which has been helped massively by the amount of tourists coming into the city at the moment. And then you've got a, 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 another confidence in the actual the part that I'm in, the property sector. So recently there's been some great drivers and some great new occupants coming into the office market, the likes of Allen and Overy, the likes of Baker McKenzie, uh, Citigroup, they've all come in and they've been successful. Brian, what does your crystal ball tell you about the implications of a corporation tax cut and, and Brexit? We like to talk about the three T's actually, there's tax, which is the corporation tax. If we get that drop, the business community here have been, you know, been waiting for this for probably 10 years now. Yeah. We still believe it's a huge game changer in terms of our ability to compete throughout Europe, even if we're not in Europe at that point, and you mentioned Brexit there. The other T is the talent, which, as I said earlier, we're going to see around the amount of talent coming out of the universities and then the amount of, of young people who are putting their talent worth worldwide in terms, and that's the next T, which is technology. And those young people, are, you know, the millennials, are really pushing ahead with technology. I then went to the Harbour and Titanic Quarter. These areas which used to house our industrial heritage are once again providing significant employment together with living and leisure space. There's been a physical transformation in this part of Belfast for which you're you're responsible. And you had to transform the psyche of the people of Belfast. When I was growing up, Titanic was never mentioned. It was something we were ashamed of. Now you've made it a great source of pride. Yeah, well, if we start with, with Titanic Quarter, when we bought over the Fred Olson en Energy interest in 2005, and we were working with CBRE in order to develop a strategy for Titanic Quarter, and we decided it's going to be, you know, an urban high density urban centre, a waterfront, uh, uh, if you like, development. And, and you can't touch on that without actually touching on Titanic. Now it's going to push forward and there's going to be many more hotels. We're sitting in this magnificent Titanic Belfast Hotel, which is the refurbishment of the old Harland and Wolf headquarters building. So this has been brought to life again and it's been made available to the people of Belfast and indeed the people of the world to come and witness and enjoy. I headed back into the city centre to meet Suzanne Wiley, the chief executive of Belfast City Council. Suzanne, I've been lucky enough to see the new Belfast and it's not the city I left in 2000. It's not the city you and I grew up in. You must be proud of the Belfast of today. Well, I think that there is real intrigue um, about Belfast and this, this um, factor of real surprise when you come here. You will be able to do tourist trails that you will find nowhere else in the world um, and the people and the welcome um, that you get here. And what about attracting investment? So it's a really good news story for, for us as a city. Um, we obviously have been held back for far too long um, in terms of what we went through when we were growing up and I think the city is really, really literally bouncing back. And the foreign direct investment story that we have here, 10,000 jobs created through big 
um, global companies coming in here and setting up their offices here with thousands of staff is just phenomenal. Also there's a really good quality of life so they do think it's important that the city culturally is very vibrant. When you look ahead five, ten years, what are your big aspirations for Belfast? Well we've, we've just developed a new 20 year plan for the city and um, it has some really big ambitions in it so we want more people living in the city centre and really bring this city back to the absolutely world-class city that it was when this building was built back in the 1900s when we had 400,000 people living in the city boundaries. Both Brian and Suzanne have referred to the burgeoning talent in the city so my next stop was Queen's University where I met their director of estates Damien Toner. Foreign investors need confidence that they have a, a capable workforce waiting for them here. What's, what's Queen's role in providing that confidence? The Queen's corporate plan has a, a main strand focused on education and students and within that strand uh, we focus a lot on the employability of our students and ensuring that they have the skills and the abilities to go out there into the local employment market and meet the needs of those foreign direct investors and local employers um, uh, whenever they graduate out of Queen's University. It, the university has invested some 350 million in its physical estate uh, over the last 10 years uh, and that's to support our ever-growing student base uh, and it's to help us compete in the, in the global university marketplace and I suppose a consequence of that investment is that it's helped with the, the, the growth of Belfast over those years uh, both from an employment perspective through creating jobs through the construction that we undertake uh, but also enhancing the city environment and that's hugely important. How do you think Queen's figures on the world stage? I think we hold our own on the world stage. Uh, I think our, our investment in the physical infrastructure around us uh, coupled with um, Belfast is an exciting and vibrant city to come and study in. I think makes us a, a, a really good, strong, uh, competitive offering in that global marketplace. Another sector I wanted to learn more about was tourism, so I caught up with Tourism NI's Managing Director, John McGrillan. All, all of a sudden, a lot of new hotels are springing up within a stone's throw of where, where we're sitting. There are hundreds of, of yeah. new hotel rooms. Are they, are they needed? Probably about 1,500 new hotel rooms being built within a stone's throw from where we are. You know, our visitor numbers have increased by 50% over the last seven years. I think what we are seeing here is the, I suppose, the supply catching up with the demand. You know, we, we've seen occupancy levels of around 80% plus record, you know, uh, room rates that people are being able to, to, uh, to charge. We have seen revenue per available room going up by 20% on average across the city. So we're at, we're at maximum capacity and, and we really need this new supply coming on stream to keep us competitive if nothing else. My tour of Belfast made clear that while certain areas have been re-established, others require further investment and regeneration. What is also obvious, however, is that the nightlife and warmth of the hospitality here remain unrivaled. Someone I've met in various cities around the world, including Shanghai and Bangkok, is Guy Hollis. Guy opened the original CBRE office here back in 1997, and after traveling the globe, has now returned to live and work in Northern Ireland. Why should foreign investors back Belfast? But if you look at Belfast now, it's a lot of opportunity here, and they're coming off a very, very low base. So if you're a cold, hard investor, and you're looking, looking at the city, you want to see you're going to get rental growth, you're going to see growth because there's going to be more inward investment. It appears that it's Belfast's time now. The Invest in NI, etc., do a lot of good work and there are a lot of companies looking to come here. It does have its challenges and, and one of them perhaps is scale uh, because a lot of investors look here and it's not actually big enough. Um, but it, it, we're getting there from that point of view, we're crossing a hurdle. Is Belfast doing enough to promote itself globally? Brexit is a challenge, it's a challenge for everybody. You'd like to say, uh, everybody here, you'd like to say it's an opportunity, but we, we do need to know what's going to happen with the border. Um, but, it, but I think Belfast ultimately is going to benefit from it. But what, what has changed again is that there are more, uh, p not locally bred developers, but people coming here and doing business. There's, there's a number of companies coming here now that are developing here, um, which, which again wasn't happening when I first came here 10 or 15 years ago. So you look at a scheme like Merchant Square, 
which is, which, is, which is just going on site in a couple of months' time, and that's 220,000 square feet of speculative office development right in the heart of Belfast. That will create a product of an office building single investment that will be 50, 60 million pound plus when it's let and occupied, which I'm sure it will be. Um, and that will attract big investors that haven't looked here before. And see, a lot won't even look if, if, it's, if, if the lot size is less than 50 million. And that, and that sounds like a lot of money, but it is, it's a reality. And those are the big investors that you want here. Castle Court recently sold. That was a very positive thing. Although it was bought locally, but it was bought with Chinese money. Very interesting change for, for Belfast, because that really shows Belfast is on the international map. The last two days have been a revelation for my home city is a city transformed. Belfast is on the move again in the right direction.